Hello punters, how are you going? Um, this is another racing preview ahead of tomorrow's racing. Um, this one is in particular is going to be on the Scone card tomorrow. Um, quite a good meeting there actually, to be honest. So if you're looking to play, um, I really do think you can find some good value on there. It's really good bets. I think actually some of my best bets for the day tomorrow are at Scone. So I'll be looking to, um, into that meeting quite in depth. So if you're looking to follow on, Get your form guides out for Scone. Um, start up with race number one at the top, the three-year-old Guineas race, one of the features of the day at the top of the car, which an interesting one, but um, nevertheless, um, you know, we'll get cracking into it. It looks a good race on paper. Um, looks to be a lot of speed in the race. Um, you know, quite a lot of these will go forward, you'd expect. A few of them might decide not to, but um, yeah, I, for me personally, this race, I have number um, I have number one military zone on top. It's 2.30, but... I think this race is going to be run to suit. There's a lot of speed in the race, as I just mentioned. And I think it's going to be able to find a nice spot for Barrier 9. Should be able to get a bit of cover and then just really launch at them late. It's the most impressive horse in the race for me. Um, so I think it's going to be really hard to beat. Um, if a second number three, Senor Fox, um, I was incredibly impressed with its last run at Hawkesbury. Tipped it on top that day and it was ran a really nice race. Um, the steps up in class now. Um, but, and the wet track form's not great. There is, it is listed as a soft five at um, Scone for tomorrow. So bear in mind those wet track forms again. Um, it doesn't have form on the wet track. That's the only concern. But I think based off that last run, it was just such an impressive turn of foot. I've got to have it in. It's going to have the race suit again. It's going to have a lot of pace in, be able to come off the back, just like uh, military zone will. Um, in for third, of the on-pace runners, I do think number two, Wild Planet for the Hawks team, will run a nice race. It does have wet track form, which is a massive tick for it. Um, as I said, if it wasn't so much speed in the race, I'd be really keen to put it on top. But I think it might, off, especially Barrier 1, it gives Tommy Berry plenty of options to see where he wants to go. May need a little bit of luck if um, a couple cross it, which I guess it probably will. Uh, but if it gets that luck, it, I can see it running a really good race um, also. Um, in for fourth, um, I did like um, number seven, Regine, for Chris Lees. I think, um, again, this has got good form on, on the wet. It's had one start on it for the placing. It was actually not a bad run on speed last time. It was beaten by Charita last start at Ramwick. Um, oh, sorry, Charitera. And then before that was by two before legs of Kai Lee. So I think that form's not too bad. I think um, it comes down in the weights as well. I mean, it was... Um, First up, when it was beaten by Kyle Lee, so it carried 61 kilos that day. It carried 59 um, last start as well. So now it's only carrying the 54 and a half. I think that weight relief would be really good for its chances. So I think you can see it running a good race. Um, to just recap the numbers, number one, military zone on top. In for second, number three, Senor Fox. In for third, number two, Wild Planet. And in for fourth, number seven, Regine. Uh, race number two, two uh, 2200 meters, um, benchmark 78. Having a look at the speed of the race, it uh, looks to be a bit of speed. It could, would suggest that Diamond Star Halo will go forward. Um, Millisane will go forward. Mazaz might lob in behind. High Opinion might go forward with Chris Lee. So quite a bit of speed in this race. Um, look, for me, I I didn't think I'd be putting it on top again, but I actually am going to go with Lord Gadotten again. I had it on top a few weeks ago at Corfu. It was a bit disappointing by Grinzing a star. Um, the star prior to that was behind Prometheus, but... I really do think that this horse has got some ability. And that trial recently by Montia Sisu was quite impressive for me. And um, I'm willing to have it on top of the $17 odds. So I think it's the big player of the day. I think it's a great chance to win. Obviously, it's had a bit of, bit of a um, bit of a spree coming over from the UK. And I just think that if it can live up to that, it will run well. Jay Ford's in the saddle. He's a king at riding the roughies home. So I'm... Going to be on his back here, and I think he's a good chance to win at the big $17 odds. In the second, I do have number 12, uh, Bahan Gold. Um, has been in and around the money the last couple of times, uh, last couple of starts, came out of that Plymouth Road race, two starts ago, which had a stack of winners come out of that. And then it finished fourth by a free fly two. It meets here again. Um, wet track stats are not fantastic. It's had four, uh, four starts, three on the soft, uh, one on the heavy, no placings. Bit of a concern. But I can see it running well. It's been in and around the place. So I can see it running a good race once again. Um, in for third, I had uh, number eight, Jake's Hill, uh, at $12 odds. I think this will run a nice race as well. I thought it wasn't it finished that far off in, in that Plymouth Road race. Before that, was running really nicely. Finished just behind um, New Fleet Fire 2 and 
Also, it also finished behind um, Supernova, who looks quite a nice type. So I do respect uh, its chances. Um, also, I think number six, Fair Light, will have a good chance for um, Chris Lee's in for fourth. Um, his wet track stats are quite good. Um, it's had two start runs on the soft. It's had a win and a set and a placing. Uh, it was quite a good finish by a 3-5-2 last start. Uh, before that, had a nice win at Kemba Grange. And obviously, that's its only two, uh, sorry, three runs in Australia. So fourth up here, I think it can return winning for ways. It has the wide barrier to get 10 with, but I think Tim Clark can get it, that sorted nicely. Uh, look, looks to be, it's a really open race. So it was a little bit hard. That's why I went with number 10, Lord Gadotten on top. And it's probably my value play of the, of the card. Um, in for second, number 12, Bay and Gold. In for third, number eight, Jakes Hill. And in for fourth, number six, Fairlight. Um, in what is a really open race, the race number two on the card. Um, race number three on the card, 1100 metre, two year old Phillies race. And we get to see the exciting Libertini once again. Um, has barriers, the wide barrier to contend with, but and it's not often I go with dollar sixty fives. Uh, but I've got to put it on top. I can't see how it gets beat off that back of that last run. Obviously, first up was a really impressive performance by Bivouac um, at Randwick in the um, that was in the um, Witten Kindergarten Stakes. Uh, then last time I got its mate out of the way, beating Akari at Ram at Randwick uh, on Anzac Day. That was just such an impressive run. And I mean, if you have a look at the speed map. Um, I think it'll get across um, and find itself in a good spot. Um, I think Devachan and S Single Blonde, which is in the um, Barrier 9, we've got um, Libertini and Barrier 10. I think it'll be able to post, uh, get itself into a nice spot. It shouldn't get tracked deep, I wouldn't think, unless a couple of horses inside get uh, kick up. But I'm going to rely on Tommy Barry to put it in a good spot and it'll run a nice race. So I, I, I think um, in for second, I do like the chances of number four, Floatus. Now, it's a pain $26. I think it's uh, massive odds uh, for Richard and Michael, Michael Freeman. Um, it's only had the one run. It was pretty well back that day, and it ran really well. It came in through late at Kemble Grange. And also, a pretty good two-year-old maiden that day, and it just got up on the line. I was impressed with that run. Um, not sure there'll be as much speed in this race, but I still think it's got a bit of ability. I think $26... Is huge odds and probably not just for its chances. Um, in for third, number three, Devachan. I think of the on pace runners, it will run a good race. Um, obviously, got its maiden ticked off last start at Newcastle over 900 metres. So it's a speedy horse. That, and look, last time out, it just sat just in behind the speed, um, came out late and was really got the hit line nicely just to get up by half a length. Before that, it was um, five lengths off Deep Sea, but Deep Sea looks quite a nice type. So I think Devachan. Uh, could run a good race as well. Um, in for fourth, I think um, number seven, Akari, will run a good race uh, for Brad Widdop, um, Sam Clifford on board. I thought it's um, run behind that Libertini was actually quite good, so going to have Libertini on top. I've got to put it in the numbers. Uh, I was thinking about putting it a bit higher up, but it's again got to come from back in the field. It's got Barry twos. It's going to need some luck, um, which is hence why I went with floaters over the top of it. But I think it'll run a nice race, and... I don't think it'll chase down Libertini, but it'll definitely be in the placing. So just to recap the numbers, number one, Libertini on top. In for second, number four, Flotus. In for third, number three, Devachan. And in for fourth, number seven, Akari. Race number four on the card, 1100 metre race, benchmark 78. Um, looking at the speed map here, looks to be an absolute stack of speed in this race. Um, so for me, I actually landed with number five, Southern Lad on top. I think it's got a great chance for... Um, John O'Shea with Billy Owen in the saddle gets he gets the claim, um, so it comes in quite nicely the weights. And as I mentioned, all that speed in the race, I think it's just going to set it up for it uh, for that wide barrier. If it can get some cover, it should be able to storm over the top of the lane. I've got a lot of time for it, Southern Lane. I think it's a uh, quite a nice horse. Um, look, coming up against a couple of good ones here, but at, at the odds, I'd be well willing to take it. Um, if you have a look at soft track forms, fantastic. It's had two starts on it for two wins. Second up. Form's pretty good. And look, last time out, I was so impressed with its run. Sit, carried 61 kilos and a half kilos that day. Really finished off powerfully behind Gold Finch. I thought that was a terrific run. Um, and I think I can see it improving again here. I've got I've got to have it on top of the nice odds of $8.50. If um, for second, I do have um, number six, Wagner. I think of some of the uh, on-pace runners, it will run a good race. Um, we'll have a good guide. It finished behind Signal Fox. Last start, it goes around in the race, um, the first race of the card, Senior Fox. So we'll get a good form um, 
good track on its form, and that's Wagner number six. It's where track form's fantastic. It's had three starts for a win and two placings, so just a few more ticks there. And so I thought it's run on pace. was quite good last start. Um, so we've got to have it in. Um, in for third, I do have number three, Americana Magic now. It did beat Wagner last time out, and it's had a freshen up since then. So um, the wet track stats aren't as good as what Wagner's is. That's why I think Wagner can turn the tables, perhaps. But I've got to have it in, um, Americana Magic. Again, it won't have all the faves on pace, but I can see it running a good race once again. Um, in for fourth, I do have number two, Star of Monsoon. I think um, second up here, run a nice race for Gerald Ryan. Um, has good second up stats and it was a good run by America and Magic at Gosford. So a lot of these horses come out of the same race. It's uh, wet track stats aren't too bad. It's had seven starts on the soft for six placings, so it should be around the money, I believe. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty comfortable having those on top. Um, having a look around them, number nine, Oneness is a bit of an intriguing runner. It's a gelding um, for um, Bourne Baker. Um, last time out, ran quite nice on pace um, at uh, the Gold Coast. And has some good wet track stats, so I think it can run a good race. Just the wide barrier is a bit of a concern, especially if it's going to be on pace with all the on-speed runners. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty confident the ones I've got um, on top. Number five, Southern Lad, looks a really good bet at $8.50 on top. Even for second, number six, Wagner, with those wet track stats, so I think it's quite appealing. In for third, number three, Americana Magic. And in for fourth, number, five, number two, Star of Monsoon. Race number five on the card, 1,100-meter race uh, for the three-year-old fillies. Uh, looks a pretty nice race. There's a lot of good types in here. Um, and yeah, have a look at the speed map. Uh, there's going to be a quite a lot of speed on in the race. So for me, that actually looks to have set the race up pretty nicely for number two, Pretty in Pink, who resumes for John O'Shea, has a massive wrap on it. Does have wet tracks form, but you yeah, have a look at last start was only 1.1 lengths off pure elation at Ramwick. I mean, in the Furious Stakes, that was a a terrific run, then it finished 2.3 lengths off Miss Fabulous, so, and then went right, uh, ran it behind a hood um, at Ramwick in a group one, so that was um, pretty nice. It's Trials haven't been fantastic, but it did finish behind Tchaikovsky as a speedy little horse, and um, to Nature Strip, who obviously is going as a favourite to do Demon 10,000, so I wouldn't read too much into the trial form, um, personally. Uh, it might be a little bit shorter than its right distance. Look, it hasn't run the 1,100 metres since it ran here at Scone, um, and that was, uh, for a matter of fact, actually, it was this time last year in the same race. So I think it can run a, a good race once again. Um, and I think with all the pace in the in the race, it'll run a nice um, nice race. If a second, number three, Profits Thumb, uh, quite similar. We'll get all the pace on in the race to come on from the back. Um, it was really impressive three starts ago being trope. And then uh, since then, had ran into a heavy and a soft track and ran into Crone where it didn't come on with, on the heavy track and as uh, as such then 3.5 lengths off Classic Legend the wet track form's concern as I said that run on the heavy was behind Crone was a bit of a concern uh, I had a, as a good chance that day so I've got it in for second um, in for third I do like the chances of um, number 5 Gongs I think this uh, was for James Cummings who resumes has the wet track form that so ran some nice three-year-old races. Um, the trials leading have been quite good. Um, so I think it'll run a nice race um, on, to, um, on its re uh, resuming first up. Um, and I think Barrier 5 is a little bit of concern, but there's a lot of speed in the race can come into it nicely off the back of that good speed. Um, and even fourth, I do like number seven, Tropezina, who Henry Dwyer, uh, interestingly, has taken it from, it was numbed at Caulfield, it's been brought up here to Scone, so I've had a bit of a query on that, I think it'd run a nice race, uh, second up stats quite good, second up um, last time, last preparation at one second up on pace, so of the on pace runs, I think it's a good chance, um, looking at the outside factors, I think Invictus Salute ain't, isn't out of it, um, it uh, obviously won really nicely beating Ron Star last start, um, before that was um, Beaten by Multage by 4.3 lengths. I think it's got a good chance. Um, number 10, Radio Profit. Although this trial was fantastic um, two trials ago. Um, and then even its um, trial by Nature Strip was quite good. Um, so uh, first up, stats aren't great. The wet track stats aren't good. But it could be a horse going forward. So look, didn't put it in my numbers, but I think it's got a decent enough chance. Madame Rouge at, at the top of the weights you know, has probably the form uh, into this race, but just couldn't put it on top. 
I just couldn't put in the numbers. Um, sorry, so I'm look quite confident. Open race, but I'm confident my on top here and pretty in pink number two. Uh, for John O'Shea, in the second number three, Profits Thumb. If we can handle the work going, I think it's going to have all the favours run a nice race. In for third, I like number five, Gongs. And in for fourth, number seven, Tropezina. Race number six on the card is a listed 1300 metre uh, Luskin Star Stakes. This is a oh, some superb runners in this race. It, it looks pretty hard um, race to dive into. Um, Look, Deploy will definitely go forward. You'd think out of barrier four, uh, Mahalanga will be up there light and Fuel might go forward. So there's not a whole heap of speed in the race. And hence I've gone with number two, Trekking. I think um, that run was fantastic being Brave Song last start. I think it would do it again. doesn't have the wet track form, which is a little bit of a concern, but I think it's just travelling so nice to this horse at the moment. It's going to get all the favours um, from barrier two, so no excuses. I think it'll run, run a nice race. Um, in for second, I do have number seven, Resin, who has just elite wet track form. Loves the, the soft going. Had a nice trial leading into this. Um, and before that was racing him some good companies. I think the $10 odds are really appealing. Um, obviously, had a bit of a slip up last start when I finished sixth. But before that, it was only just narrowly beaten on two occasions by an Avantage and Winter Bride and Group Racing. So I think it'll run a nice race here again. Off Barry one is going to need a little bit of a luck. But I think if it gets that luck, it'll run a really nice race. Um, in for third, I do like um, number 11, Mahalunga, for the Hawks team. Big step up in class, but the wet track stats are really appealing. Two runs on the soft, two wins. Um, and that last start win was really good, beating Special Missile just on the line and Benchmark 100. That was a, a nice run. I think fourth up, it's going to be ready to go run again. It's, the wet track helps. Uh, in for fourth, I've got number five, Lanciato. I think... This horse stepping back from a way for age group one, that was of course the Schweppes All Age Stakes. Thought it ran, you know, it didn't run too well there, finished last. But yeah, you're looking at it, uh, before that was sort of had nice runs by an Eckstein and Princess Posh in group three companies. So stepping back in grades, doesn't mind the wet track. I just think it can run a good race um, from the back, especially um, if there's a bit more speed in the race, we'd be more confident to put it in. But I'm pretty confident number two, Trekkie on top. In for second, number um, seven, Racine. In for third, number 11, Marlunga, the step up in class, but gets the lightweight and enjoys the wet track. And in for fourth, number five, Lanciato. Now, I've left number three, Brave Song, out. Just does not enjoy the wet track. Has great second up stats, but the wet track form is a real big concern. And that wide barrier for me, with not much speed in the race, is a massive concern. Um, I was quite keen on it behind trekking last start, and I actually managed to tip that trifecta with uh, last start, which was quite nice, um, but I just think that the wet track form is a real concern. Um, if it doesn't get through the going up at, from the back, um, I just don't think, see it being in the placing. So pretty confident the ones I've got on top. Um, look, I think number six, Redouble for Bourne Bay can run a nice race, so I certainly wouldn't be leaving it out. The second half stats are a bit concerning, but it was pretty good by on trekking last start, so basing off that run might have come back quite nicely, so I can see it running a good race. But yeah, quite confident with trekking on top. Um, in one of the features of the day. Uh, race number seven is a group three, 1400 meter race for the Phillies and Mares. Um, in this race, I there's a bit of, bit of pace on, um, especially out of the middle barriers. That's where you're probably seeing most of the pace in the race. Um, and for me, I actually have lent towards um, number, Number 11, Into the Abyss. I think it's got a good chance for John Thompson. Um, doesn't mind the uh, wet track stats. It's had four starts on a soft track for three placings. It's been really unlucky. It's just beaten by 0.1 of a length by the Burnham last time out. It's had a little bit of a freshen up since then. Uh, it was beaten by Multage by 2.2 of a length. So I think it can break it this time around. It can be there. It will have all the advantages to come off the pace. And win. just might need a little bit of luck from that inside barrier. But I think it's going to be the one I put on top. In for second, number three, Sabatiano for James Cummings. Uh, enjoys the wet track. Um, has had a nice trial leading into this. On the on track, on the of the on pace runners, I think it'll run a nice race. Um, steps back slightly in class, I think it could run a good race. Um, in for second, number two, Sirens Fury. Um, soft track stats aren't great, but the heavy are really good. And it's stepping out from obviously the all age stakes last time out uh, behind Pirata. Before that, uh, we ran into the Sapphire Stakes behind White Moss. So. 
Set him back in class here a little bit. Last time around at Group 3, it won it, beating Manuel. So I think Siren's Fury run a nice race. It has had a win at this track before, so that is very appealing to me, especially so if it goes up to a heavy track tomorrow. Definitely have a big query on it. Um, in for four, they do have number six Moss Trip for uh, Peter and Paul Snowden. I thought his trial was quite nice. Uh, recently, obviously, ran the Coolmore Classic, finished eighth of 20 there, but... First, the soft tracks aren't stats aren't too bad, um, and I thought his tra uh, run prior to the Coolmore Classic was quite good in the Millie Fox behind White Moss. So, if you return to that form, I see it running a good race. Um, Barrier two might need a little bit of luck. Um, it'd be interesting to see where they go with it, but pretty confident on top um, with number eleven into the abyss. Lincoln can break a stuck this time. Uh, in for second, number three, Sabatiano. In for fourth, number two, Sirens Fury. And in for four, uh, sorry, in for third, number two, Sirens Fury. And in for fourth, number six, Moss Trip. Final race, the Carl Emo to meter list, listed race. The Coolmore Hortensia Stakes. Um, pretty nice field, this one. Um, and I'm pretty confident with putting um, Viridine on top. Bit of speed in the race. I think it can come off it um, and will produce a nice run uh, for... Of, uh, James Cummings and sorry just give me a fraction of a second just have my internet drop out yeah so so it's been uh, pretty well backed early um, it's now to four dollars forty and playing dollar ninety the place thing it's quite good soft track stats are good thought it's run behind trek and was really good last time out I've just got to have it on topic I've got to have it on top in this race. Trekking, of course, goes around um, in two two races prior race number six, so we we'll get a bit of form out of that race, and that will obviously strengthen the chance of Victorum if it runs well. Uh, sorry, Viridine. Um, talking about Victorum, I do have it in for second. Uh, I think it run a nice race first up. Be interesting to see when it goes further on into its prep, but I think it can run a nice race. So I've got it in for second behind Viridine, so Viridine was on top. Victorum in for second. Uh, in for third, I do like um, number 11, Jungle Eyes. I think it can run a nice race. Um, doesn't mind the wet track. It's coming out of a um, listed race at Hawkesbury. as the gold Hawkesbury Rush um, last time out. I uh, think it can run a nice race again on the pace. Um, and in for fourth, I do like number seven, Spending to win. I think it can run a better race here. Second up, second up stats aren't too bad. And the soft track forms quite nice. And it could get it, the pace to run on from the back. So I've got it in for fourth. So I'll just recap the numbers for the last race of the card. Number two, Viridine on top. In for third, uh, second, number three, Victorum. In for third, I do have number 11, Jungle Eyes. In for fourth, number seven, Spending to Win. So that's the uh, the preview of Scone tomorrow. Good luck if you're following. Check out my Caulfield video. And check out my next two previews, which will be on the, the two feature racings of the day. We'll have the South Australia Derby at Morfordville and the Doobin 10,000 at Doobin. So keep an eye out for them. Uh, good luck punting tomorrow if you're following. And thanks again. Let's continue watching. Thanks for the support.